All right, welcome to part three of our study on why it's important to take a Roth as opposed to just deferring everything. So now we're 70 years old. So remember, we started at 50. We went to 60 when we quit working. The husband and the wife did. Now we're at 70 years old. And between them, they got $2 million in a 401k, all tax deferred. They also have $65,000 in an after-tax account. That is the money they saved from not paying the taxes by deferring the tax by deferring the uh, the taxes to the future, so they saved by not paying the taxes, um, and they invest that money, and that's what they've done in an after tax account. So they got two million dollars in their four hundred one k, sixty five thousand in a taxable account. Now, because most people say, "Oh, I'm retired, I better take a little bit less of a uh, uh, of aggressive stance in my market," so I'm just going to get five percent a year as opposed to seven. So because I'm more old, I'm older and I'm you know more nervous theoretically about the markets, I want more bonds. You know, I can argue against that, but whatever. Just for time being, I'm taking from 100 percent stocks to a 60-40 portfolio. And that way I'm only expecting to get 5% from here on out. Now my after-tax account, I'm just gonna let that puppy grow uh, just because I don't ever plan on touching that. So let's talk about what this looks like now. So if we just look at 7% a year on the after-tax account and we look at it till age 80. That guy has doubled because, again, the rule is 72, which is why I like using number seven in a year in 10 years simply because it's easy. So 65000 at a 7% a year rate of return over 10 years will double, which means that will be worth 130000 bucks. Now, the RMDs, though, all right? So remember, they have required distributions because they hit 70. And here's the table. You take 27.4, divide that into your amount of $2 million, and that's your required minimum district, uh, the RMD amount, which is $73,000. Now, so what you do is you take this amount, subtract that amount, and you add 1.05, and you'll get an ending value of 2.023 million. All right, so we keep doing this. 2.023 uh, million is how much as a 71-year-old would have to take out. Divide that amount by 26.5. That's an RMD of 76,000, and we just keep going and going. So here's 75 years old. Remember, we only started with 2 million. 75 years old. We have, uh, after RMD, we have $2.1 in there, even though we had to take $90,000 a year in RMDs, required distributions, because our RMD amount is less than the growth we're getting on our portfolio. In fact, we can easily see this. At 75, you got 22.9 as your divisor. So you take this amount here, how much you were at the end of your 74th year. So but when we, uh, at December 31st, when we were 74, we had $2.09 million in the account. We divide that by 22.9, because now we're in the new tax year, we're at 75. And that means we have to take an RMD of 91,832. So that minus that, so this amount here is the ending value from previous year, minus your RMD in this year, to times 1.05, that's our rate of return, leaves us with 2.099 million in the account. Again, we're taking almost six figures now. And how we figure that out is we simply take one, divided by 22.9, and that means we have a 4.3% distribution rate. Four, so we got less than 5% distribution rate. So that's 3.7, that's 3.9, something like that. 4.3 right here, and it's, so we're getting five. We're only required to take a less than five until right here. If you can see that little pinkish, ugly pinkish color, I, I don't have a bright red for some reason. I don't know why I don't, but anyway. That's when the market, uh, that's when we're forced to take out more than what we're getting. So 19.5 is the divisor there. So one divided by 19.5 means we have to take 5.12% uh, out, which is essentially when we're, I hate to say dipping into principal, but it's we're taking more out than we're getting back as a rate of return. So we still, we've taken all this money out here, my friends. We're talking three, four, six hundred. We're closing on a million dollars after 10 years only at 5%. We're not swinging grand slams here. You know, we're not Hank Aaron. And yet we still have $2 million in our account when we hit 80. All right. So we got 2 million here. We've taken a hundred million. I mean, a million out, probably even more than that, but just, you know, for simplicity, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you know, roughly a million dollars. And we got 130 over here. Now, again, this is just, I just want to show you that because we're going to do this without the Roth, with the Roth next time and show you the difference. All right. So anything jumps out at you here? Anything jumps out at you with what's going on here? So what we're going to do is we're going to we'll we'll do a couple videos specifically with a Roth, and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll do a review on everything as we you know close this up here. 
Well, $110,000, $111,000 of income, what does that mean? So let's just go up here. $111,000 of income. Plus, we'll just say they each had oh, 2,000 a month in Social Security. All right, so that'd be 2,000, be 24,000, 48,000, plus 24,000 Social Security would make them, let me get my trusty calculator, 1119130 plus 24,000. It's going to put them at 135 for the provisional income. Essentially, they're going to pay taxes on 85% of their Social Security. So if they have 48,000 of Social Security income times 0.85, they're going to add another 40,080 in taxes up here because they're going to pay the full, uh, the, the full force of taxes on Social Security. So we take this. And I was able to do that in my head, my friends. If you're not quite sure how I did that, quick calculate. I've just done this so many times. Just watch my videos on how to calculate your taxes on Social Security. Uh, plus one, one, oh, wait, let me write this up there. Four, zero, eight hundred. All right, so I will take that plus one, 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 nine, three, zero. That means they're two, seven, three, zero is their AGI minus 24, and now they get 26,000, 6,600. We're gonna assume the Trump tax cuts have not expired. That means their taxable income is 126,130. All right, so they're still in the 12% tax, uh, no, they're in the 22% tax bracket now for sure. All right, and we'll figure this out now. So let's do something here. Let's go back over here. So we're going to take that 126, 130 as our taxable income. The first 19,000 at 10%. The next uh, 57,000 at 12%. And the next, whatever that 127 minus 77. Uh, minus uh, 77. Again, this isn't to the penny. And if you think it is, well, let me share something with you. We're assuming a 5% annual rate of return or a 7% annual rate of return. That is simply not going to happen. It's just, it's not. It's, but, <laughs> so don't get too caught up. Oh, you're missing it by 5 cents. It doesn't matter. Uh, 49,000 at 22%. Oops, draw my trusty calculator. All right, so now what we got to do is we got to calculate all those taxes. Oy. So we take 49,000 times that by 22%. That's 10,800. Fifty-seven thousand times twelve percent is six eight forty. And then we got nineteen hundred for nineteen thousand times ten percent. Plus ten thousand eight hundred plus nineteen hundred. That means nineteen thousand five hundred and forty is our taxes. All right, so here, just their RMDs and their Social Security, they're paying 19540 on, you know, 152000 of income. Yeah, so let's take a look. 19540 divided by 152000 income. That's a 13% tax bracket. That's not significant, but, uh, no, it's going to get a lot worse. They're not paying Medicare premiums. All right, this does not put them, it's getting close, but right now it doesn't put them in the realm for Medicare premium increases but it's getting close because remember the Medicare premium increases are about, I think it's 175, something like that. And they're getting pretty close to there, that's for sure. So they're not paying extra Medicare premiums, they're paying full brunt on their Social Security. And any long-term capital gains or dividends on this account right here is also being taxed at 15%. Whereas if they would have stayed in the 12% tax bracket, it would not be tax-free. So just paying full tax on Social Security, full tax on long-term gains and capital, uh, long-term gains and uh, qualified dividends. Uh, paying a 22% tax rate is what their effect is what their tax bracket is. Effective tax rate about 13%, and then whatever in their state, they're still in Texas, so no state income tax. So that's the the crux of the matter here. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna show you where it starts getting bad because this is that that's bad. Don't get me wrong, but it's gonna start getting even worse. So stay with me. All right, thanks.